Good morning, welcome to Something Saturday. So today is a gorgeous day out here, um, but we're gonna head into the craft room. So the other day we actually had a, um, oh, probably a couple of weeks ago now, we had a bit of a play with the beautiful balloons, um, what's it called, sweet. And um, I thought today that um, we'd have a little look at one of the more unusual dyes in it. So let me switch this off and head into the craft room. Okay, so here we are inside. Um, so this is actually the dye that I was thinking, well, you know what, it is a little unusual. I have worked out three different ways that we can use it. Um, so I thought I would show you them. That is the stamp set that goes with this and obviously they all cut out in different ways. Um, if you were here um, a couple of weeks ago, you would have seen me create this card here. So that just uses that one with this big die. And that's, that's actually the only die that I used in that one. Um, however, I'm gonna take a seat and we are gonna have a play. So, there's my die. Now there's, as I say, there's three different ways that I've worked out that you can use it. So I'm going to bring in another card that I've made here, which is a little bit unusual. Um, and what I've done is I've actually just deliberately cut it out like that. And then I've threaded ribbon through it. So you can see that it's threaded through on the back as well. Um, so that's, that's the first way. Um, just use it as a die, just like that, to cut it. And I will pop that card away now. Then the second way that I've worked out to use it is you can cut partially. So rather than cutting all the way through and having cardstock on both sides, if you cut it partially, it then creates a fringe which is quite pretty. And I'm thinking that what we'll do is we'll have a go at making a card with it. So, so far, I haven't made any cards with the fringy idea. Um, actually, no, I tell a lie, I have, hang on a minute. I've sort of semi made a card with it. So, <laughs> this one here just uses that little bit of fringing, which clearly I didn't manage to stick down terribly well, but, um, so there's that, let's get rid of that. But I was thinking that it would look really cool as a full on card. So what I have done, here's some I prepared earlier, as they say in Blue Peter. <laughs> uh, that's a very English reference. I know I've used it before. <laughs> um, it also kind of looks like a comb. So, you know, if you needed a comb on, um, uh, like, actually, you know what would be really cool, now that I'm thinking about it, is to do a men's card and have, like, a comb and, I don't know, bottle of hair wax or, I want to say brill cream, but that sounds really old. <laughs> I'm sure they probably don't even make that anymore. <laughs> so I've cut a few of them anyway. And... Then, uh, that's right, yes, I should have a spare one of those. Um, uh, no, okay, think Heather, think. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll start at the bottom and I'll work my way up like this and create, you know, those skirts that used to be like this. So I reckon if I just put a little layer of glue along there, it would look really cool. And then I can out alternate these ones. So I've used the, um, and now I can't even remember what they're called, blouses. I'm doing well here this morning, aren't I? Uh, the dry brushed, bleh, brushed even, metallic designer series paper, specialty designer series paper. And it has this gorgeous um, blue and, those are the two that that come in it but aren't they gorgeous so pretty with the gold 
um, in them and everything. And I just thought that would make quite a cool card, actually. So I reckon I should have enough here to be able to do this. So what I'll do is I will finish that off and come back on and show you later. Anyway, so we will see what I do with that. And then the last thing that I've worked out that you can do with this is to create little flowers to put on your card. So there's a technique that this is called and I can't think what it's called paper quilling that's it um, so it's actually really simple to do because I want the um, the color to be when it's sort of squished out like that I, I need to curl it this way rather than this way because otherwise I'm going to get a nice little white which is probably going to not look so good <laughs> Um, and because I want to curl it in on itself, I'm going to add the glue along here. So what I've done is taken some of this. So tear and tape adhesive and you just want to run it along the bottom there. And I did my, my first one in stages and I think that's probably a better way of doing it like this. So if you then peel this off and you can see how you've got like a little layery bit there. So if you want to just turn that over and at least that way you won't end up with lots of sticky coming out the bottom too. So then it is a case of rolling it up. Once you've got part of it going, it's actually a lot easier to roll after that. You can then just roll it between your fingers and just make sure that the bottom of it is still going to be straight because you don't really want it to be really uneven at the base. So, oops. And just need a wee bit more of this. Where's the end gone to? Amazing, isn't it, how the end just disappears on you? There it is. Oh. <laughs> that would be right. Didn't quite make it to the very end. Bother. Just add a tiny bit more. Oh, come on. Seriously. There it is. And that can come off there. We can fold it over like that and fold that section over so it's all nice and neat and then just carry on rolling it. And nearly at the end. There it is. Right. So once you've got it like that, you then start to squish these bits out. So just Aim for the middle, squish it out. If there's any that have ended up on the wrong side, persuade them back over to the right side. And there it is. So what I had to do earlier, because um, it automatically wants to sort of like spring back up again, which is not going to be terribly convenient in an envelope. Um, so I just got my bone scorer and giving it a good squish down. Does end up slightly stuck to the table because you've got the slight glueiness underneath there. Um, and then what I've done with this one is just added a couple of little flowers which I've swiped from the Zoo Crew. Um, I think it's called Zoo Crew. Zany Zoo dies even. So there's two little flowers in the Zany Zoo dies and I just thought they would go nicely on top of this just to um, to give me some a 
something that will keep the top of it flat and then I can put an embellishment on as well. So that was the reason behind that. So there you go, three ways of using um, this particular die. So what I'll do is I'm going to finish off the cards, hopefully hop back on and show you. Um, but if the video ends here and I don't hop back on and show you, um, go on over to my blog and check it out anyway. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, and share the love if you've enjoyed the video. And I will see you next week. Okay, bye. So I'm just hopping back on to show you how I thread the ribbon through the um, the card. I recommend that you sear the end of the ribbon. So just with a flame and you just run the flame over the end of it. And it does mean that the um, ribbon now has a fairly hard piece for you to thread in and out. And also it's not going to fray as you're doing things. So I've gone with every third one. So I'm just going to start it off about there and you can pull it through a bit and then you count three down and you push it through that gap and pull it through one two three see how how easy it is when when you've got a nice um sort of solid end to the ribbon And once you've got it going, it's actually not too bad to do, really. Oh, and apparently I keep... <laughs> not sure which is going to be easier, the um, turning the card over or turning the, um, the ribbon over. Just got to remember to go that way. So just underneath what I'm doing is um, pushing it up with my finger slightly. Oops. Just so that I can get that little bit of a gap to be able to push this sort of in. So the reason I've gone with three is partly because I like the look of it like that. But also because if you go with two or one, there's a higher chance of it actually um, splitting the little... Um, that they can't they're not that um oh, they're delicate there you go let's find the right word for it shall we um and i don't really want to end up breaking any because then it ruins my entire card and i have to start again which would be horrendous after having got one side done <laughs> i would not be happy so let's just keep going. And I don't know if you've noticed this with my ribbon, but what I've started to do is just tie a little piece of cotton around it because I tend to find that the ribbons left on their own have this habit of unravelling and then you go to get it and, and you've got ribbon everywhere and that's kind of irritating. So so I just loop mine around this and when you pull it, it, it just un unravels in sort of a timely fashion as opposed to when you don't want it to. Uh, I may cut some of this out. Okie dokie, so once you get to the end and it's all all done like this, you need to have a way of neatening off the ends. So you can see that I've done so with this one above there. What I want to do is I actually want it so that it tucks behind this. And then that way, when it's behind that, you don't see it from the front particularly, you kind of a little bit, but and then it's neater on the back as well. So, um, so what I want it to do, because I want it to tuck behind there, I'm going to trim this one off about there and you want it to be straight rather than on an angle now 
So the angle is good for when you're um, you're threading it, but straight is what you need now. And just see the end of that. Excellent. So then this should now, if we can persuade it to, it will just tuck behind there. I'm thinking that depending on the ribbon that you've chosen to use, depends on how easy this will be. But I'm just going to use my scissors or you could use your tape, your pick tool to do this. And the other thing is, unless you want that unravelling at an inconvenient time, just grab a, um, um, a mini glue dot and slide it underneath there and hold it down. And then that way it will mean that it's not going to come out and go everywhere. So we'll just finish off the other side as well. So I'm just going to cut it to about there. That looks better. And just see whether I can persuade that into there. And again, the advantage with having the um, the end seared like that is that you then don't see the, um, it makes it easier to sort of thread it in. So I'm just going to grab another glue dot, chuck that behind there. And there we go. So if it is showing slightly from the front, all you need to do is just hop under there with your pick, take your pick tool. And there it is. You can see that one slightly as well. There we go. So yes, this one I was thinking I will pop my flowers onto there. And would you like to see how the other one turned out? It's not completely finished, but I have. Let me just stand up and make sure that this is going to show in all its glory. Isn't that amazing? I love it. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to put a saying onto this, but I will endeavour and I will do so. Um, so if you go on, hop over to my blog and have a look, you'll actually be able to see the completely finished cards. And um, yeah. Oh, that's a bit... That's better. Um, so yeah, there you go. All right, go over, check out my blog and uh, come and join me next week. Okay, bye.